Okay. Um, hi, everybody. I think I can start. I hope that you can see me well. Uh, let me know how are you. I hope that, yeah, people is excited to be here. I'm so happy to be here. This is my first time um, that actually I'm going to do a talk or an online conference. Hope next time I can be in person for North Lebanon. Uh, hope that I can visit someday. Um, let me introduce myself before I start talking about Firebase and all the news that I have. My name is uh, Laura Morinigo. Um, you can see my accent. I'm not British, but I live in London. I'm originally from Argentina, yeah, the land from Messi, if you like football, uh, far away. Um, and yes, and actually I work for Samsung Internet. Uh, is, um, that is a browser that I will tell you a little bit later. I'm a Women Tech Makers Ambassador here in London. And also I'm a Google Developer Expert for Firebase. That's why today I will talk about Firebase and I will also talk uh, about the web, okay? Yeah, Firebase is cool. I will tell you a lot of stories uh, about Firebase. So yeah, as you know, um, this year Firebase was online. Um, sorry, the Google I.O. was online. Uh, we missed the in-person event, so hopefully we can have it soon, um, our events that are in person. So let me um, introduce you about what, what we're going to check today and see what else we're going to discuss. Again, most of the news that I will share with you today will be related with Google I.O. Anyway, I will also explain some of my personal background on my experience with Firebase. And I would like to know here, which kind of developers are you? Again, in my case, my background is web development. So most of the things that I will explain today will be related with the web. But let me know if there is any Android or iOS developers, because as you know, Firebase is a cross-platform. Um, it's, 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 it's cross-platform, so you can use it for Android, iOS, or the web. Which kind of developers we have? Android developer for life, great. Also, why not Flutter developer? Um, let's take a look. I told you before that I work for Samsung Research UK. Um, what, what do I do there? So I work for Samsung Internet. Uh, then maybe this is something new for you. Um, Samsung Internet is a browser. Yes, Samsung has their own browser that is um, an Chromium project, so uh, you got the same features um, that it has in Chrome, for example, and other browsers that are with the same Chromium project. Um, it's also open source, okay? So that means that I actually, I research everything that is related with the web, and I work for developers. <laughs> Besides, I'm a developer myself, but now what I need to do is research what is um, uh, the best practices um, and uh, share with the developers so developers can build cool stuff. Okay. So let's start with our mission statement is leave the web better than we found it. <laughs> so this is amazing because um, one of the things that we'll talk today is about Firebase. And Firebase, in my personal case, helped me to dedicate myself especially into the things that I care most, saving me a lot of time. Um, so that's why today we're going to talk about Firebase. So let's see what we got for today. Um, in this case, we're going to check four points. Uh, the first one would be uh, the news around the emulator suite Firebase storage. Okay. 
don't know if you heard about the news around that, but it's, it's something really particular. The emulator suit was already here um, some time ago. Then we, we're going to have the app check, the, the modularized web SDKs. That's one that I'm really excited. And other extensions and other news that I will talk to you today. Again, as I can see, I can see there are Android developers too. So I will talk anyway about which are other new stuff that are happening with Firebase. Alrighty, so if you, does anybody here um, use Firebase before or somebody that never use it? Please put your comments there. But let me share with you why I like Firebase so much. Firebase is a platform with a lot of different tools that you can use from real-time database, um, Firestore, um, hosting. And then if you're using, if you're using um, Android or iOS, you can use it to test, to have some analytics. I think later, you're going to learn a little bit more about how to build a server, serverless app. Please stay. This conference, I think, is so useful for you. And in my case, I use Firebase first to start teaching um, no relational databases. I used to teach um, programming and other technologies. And I started to use Firebase for uh, teaching because I found it really useful for that. And it's very simple to set up everything. And the second one, uh, the second reason why I started using Firebase is because, for example, how many times you need to deliver something to the client and or you need to deliver a product and you need something quick and you don't have time to, for example, uh, set up a database somewhere or even sometimes hire some, somebody from the back end. Um, so with these, um, it makes developers life easier. Let's say like that, because it provides hosting uh, for free <laughs> uh, that's a good word. We we all like free stuff, right? Uh, hosting, and you can use the database, of course, and you don't have to uh, set up a server somewhere because everything is in the cloud. So you can start building apps very, very fast. So let's start with the first news. The storage emulator. So uh, we got the storage emulator some time ago already, but now the storage emulator joins the emulator suite. Before we got a lot of different functionalities there, Firestore emulator, Alt emulator, and uh, now we added the storage emulator. The emulator suite, what is it? Basically, it lets you run emulator versions of our backend products on your own machine, right? So with this, you enable rapid iteration without interfering with production data or incurring costs. This is super important. Why? Because Firebase is free, but if you start having a lot of data and information, of course, you need to start paying. And sometimes, and it happens to me when I was working with clients, that um, they need to scale their app and they are afraid of the cost. So they don't have a way to test it because if they test with a million users, probably they need to be charged by a million users. With these, you can run the same um, backend in the cloud, but in this case, locally. So with this, you, you don't have any risk about costs or even you can check performance because that's a different thing that you have to keep in mind when you build your apps. Okay, so with this, um, a few months ago, Firebase added um, Firebase something authentication. And now the latest uh, feature about the emulator suite is the 
uh, cloud storage for Firebase. So with this, it's giving you more coverage for your backend products. With the storage emulator, you can upload, download, and modify files as you would in production. It also interacts with the other emulators, so you can trigger cloud functions for Firebase and protect access to your files with, Fire with Firebase authentication. And everything from your local desktop. Um, to use the emulator, what you need to do is download the Firebase CLI. If you never used Firebase before, Firebase uh, has a CLI, a client, and, you, when you, and that's where you can start building and using all their functions. And then you can launch the emulator. I will show you how. Again, let's recap before, how does it work? Um, so basically, we're going to have our own um, server that is going to be run locally. And it can, it can be web app, and your Android app, or your iOS app. And with this, later, you can check and emulate every functionality that Firebase have. And in this case, for example, if you're using the web, you can emulate hosting, cloud, or in the case of Android or iOS, you can also emulate real-time database, cloud Firestore, ALF, and now, you know, cloud storage. But let's see how do you use it. Again, first of all, you need to download the Firebase CLI. Okay, that's your first step. First step. And once that you get that, you have the Firebase emulators start. That's what you put in your command line. With this, you can start running all the functions of Firebase, but locally. And let's, and let's see an example of the storage, how it would be if I want to use the, um, emulator suite with storage. Pretty simple and straightforward. You need to initialize, as usual, the Firebase storage, and then just use the property use emulator to run the storage in your local host. That's it. If you use it, or if you are going to um, test later, I would like to let you know, I would like to know your thoughts or how, how it was for you. Okay, so we already got the emulator suite Firebase storage. Again, why would you use that? To test. That's it. To test your performance, to test uh, which kind of cost you can have. And it, it, it's like you have production, but locally, okay? So let's go to the second part. Second part is app check. That's something new that Firebase released now. So let's see what is uh, app check. Uh, Firebase is pretty safe. And in this case, it release um, app check to keep your infrastructure and users safe. So this is a powerful new security. Again, this is in beta right now. So if you want to test, test it. But again, as every beta feature, you need to check how how it works right because this is this is on test and it's basically just an additional layer of security that protects access to your services it just verifies the incoming traffic that is coming from your app and it block it blocks traffic that doesn't have valid credentials uh, right now app check is available for um, cloud storage real-time database, and cloud function for Firebase. Again, this is just an extra security check. Firebase it already is using um, security rules, but just in case to prevent um, that um, third people um, access to your data without security credential, credentials, that's why AppCheck is using. You can actually test right now. It's available in the platform. OK, so we check the emulator suite Firebase storage. 
object. And now this is my favorite part, and I will tell you why. The modularized web SDK. Web SDKs. Um, basically, this is related with performance. If you use Firebase for the web, most of the time you need to download the whole library every time that um, your web is, uh, is um, in, in production for example. And sometimes if you're using a lot of functions, it can be pretty heavy and it can affect your performance. And we don't want that. Performance is really important, especially for the web. We want things fast and the user needs to have a good experience. So these new SDKs allows you to import only what you need. It reduces the SDK size up to 80%. So you can have less code and, of course, faster page loads. These are the, some of the numbers that is currently reducing about lines of code and which, which, um, how much performance is um, improving. Um, so as you can see, the improvement is so much better in so many different types of uh, features that Firebase has. Again, that includes performance. How do you use this? This is an example of before, um, the, the way that we used to um, use Firebase. Uh, so with this, if you use Firebase before, for example, let's say that I want to use uh, Firebase authentication. I just do import Firebase from Firebase app, and then I call Firebase auth because that's the one that I, I want to use, and then I initialize my app. So let's see what's new now. Now you need to do import initialize app from Firebase app, and then import initialize auth for Firebase out. And then that's it. Maybe you don't see many difference in the code. Uh, it's just a few lines, right? This is before and this is an after. Um, you are, it's like, but now it's like you're calling a library, like a, fun a specific function and it's less code. You're importing less code. So that's the benefit of this upgrade because the performance is going to be better. A lot of companies or startups that I used to work with, uh, they have some problems with performance because they want to um, have a good experience to the user. But now, uh, actually, it's possible to have a better performance because you can just export um, the functions that you need and have less code. Again, it's all about performance, okay? Alrighty, finally, I think every, all, all of uh, the things that I mentioned before are related with um, the web, but there are other news that maybe are interesting for you. Let's take a look. There is Firebase app distribution. That this is, yeah, for Firebase, um, Android developers that are, are here, that I know there are a few. And Firebase app distribution now supports Android app bundles for streamlined testing. So basically, you can now distribute AAB releases with Firebase app distri distribution. What, what does it mean? It means that you can test the actual binaries that Android users install on their devices. This is something that Google is um, pushing a lot. It's like, they say like it's the future of publishing uh, an Android app on Google Play. So keep an eye on this and, and start testing what is um, the way that works for you. Another uh, news that we have, Firebase also work with extensions. Extensions are just uh, features that you can integrate with Firebase. So with these, uh, we got new extensions that basically you can add to Firebase. For example, now you can search with Algolia, 
You can manage marketing with MailChimp, um, communicate with your users with MessageBear. I didn't try any of these ones. Uh, the only one that I give it a go was run subscription payments uh, with Stripe. So, um, uh, because that's related with the web, but if you try any of the other one, please let me know. The other thing that um, is um, new is that they, they just enhance the search and filter if you use Crashlytics. Again, this is uh, something Android or iOS, um, uh, not the web, but if you, if you use Crashlytics, you will see a better dashboard. And finally, uh, the, the performance monitoring is also having a new dashboard. You can actually check now. Um, and you can have data in real time about what's going on with the performance of your app. This one is pretty nice. So you can basically uh, test and give it a try and see which, how your web app is working. This is the current dashboard that you will see. This is in beta again. But here you will see more information about your uh, performance. Um, so with this also is related with when you want to scale, um, remote config is another thing that um, Firebase um, offers and is great because it, it's, it's just something related with Android or iOS. But in this case, what is the update? Um, remote config has a new dashboard that it helps you to have a better visualize and optimize your app configuration. So if your business grow, you can tailor Firebase and check how your needs of, of your clients can be satisfied. So that's it. Um, I hope that you like, oops, let me just put my, my information there. Those were uh, some of the news of Firebase. Again, the last ones were not related with the web, but I think uh, you can try. And if there are Android developers or iOS, please take a look. I would like to know uh, your thoughts. I'm really excited about the web. And um, you can talk with me um, on Twitter. My Twitter is this is Lara, okay? <laughs> and uh, also with our Twitter at Samsung Internet. And besides that, I also have my Instagram where actually I put things not only about tech, also about living here in London and other cool stuff for people. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Yeah, Laura, thank you very much for this great presentation. I mean, we really enjoyed it. Uh, the news of Firebase for uh, especially the performance. Uh, I, I actually uh, always uh, thinking about this, why we don't import or use. Uh, so finally, it's out and the performance will be much, much better in building applications. Yeah. So, if anyone has a question here. Yes, I can see a question. Um, here, uh, there's a question that says, what's the add Firebase instead of SQL and MySQL? Uh, basically, with SQL, you have to um, have a server to save your information. And Firebase is in the cloud, right? So you don't, you don't have to have any server at all because everything will be in the cloud. Um, so that's one. And second, Firebase is uh, the, the database that has is not relational. So the way that it works is different. It's a no relational database. There are no queries or select from at all. Um, the information is um, provided by if it's real-time database, it's going to be a JSON. And if, if it's Firestore, it will be a document format. See, similar to MongoDB, if you, if you, if you um, get the chance to know MongoDB. So that's the main difference.
And I, I don't think uh, there's more questions. Someone asked if it's free servers or paid factory mix. Yeah, so Firebase is, um, for, for example, um, hosting is free. Uh, but if you check the prices, um, it's basically on, on demand. You can start everything for free. But for example, if you if you are using the real time database and your the amount of data exceeds certain kind of limit, you you're gonna start um, paying. But you it's like you need to have a lot of data in your app to start paying. And if if you get a lot of data, it means like you can money <laughs> because your app is doing well. But I, for, for example, I have a one in production and um, I got like, uh, I don't know, a thousand users and it's still free for me. So it depends on how you're going to use it and then the amount of data that you have. Yes, I would put my Twitter. This is my Twitter, if you if you want to ask. And then and there is another question. Is there a plan to add login, not analytics? I don't know. Yeah, I don't work. I mean, I'm a Firebase TD, but I, I'm, I don't know anything about future plans. So maybe we need to ask somebody from Google or, um, yeah, which, which kind of plans um, they have. But anyway, um, if you're interested in, in, in future, uh, features <laughs> or you, you want uh, something in particular, reach out to uh, the Firebase team and ask for um, what it would be great for you, send feedback. They usually hear developers a lot. So that, that's something that I recommend. Yeah, we actually now have another session about Firebase also. So maybe... Maybe you can ask, yeah. Maybe Srabi can help us. And one minute, we will start uh, her session. Thank you, Laura, for your session today. Uh, thanks. Really enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks uh, a lot, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the day. Bye bye. Yeah. You are invited to watch us. Yeah, day. yeah. I, I will be around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See you. See you. Bye. Goodbye. Have a nice day.